This story takes place in the Bridger Mountains of Southwest Montana. Here, a family of great gray owls is raising chicks. At only a few days old, the chicks require constant supervision. While the female stays in the nest, the male delivers food. In this instance, it's a small vole caught in a nearby meadow. Though too young to even see, the chicks are fed day and night on this journey through the early stages of life. This old growth Douglas fir forest is the place these owls call home. Centuries old trees like the ones that grow here are what create these unique and critical forest habitats required by species like the great gray owl to reproduce successfully. Closed canopy rich with understory, jumping with biodiversity, they offer true glimpses of timelessness. In a perfect world, all of the forests would appear this way. However, here there exists an industry that wishes to let the light into these dark places. They leave their mark in orange paint. This is the story of the trees with orange rings. When I first came to Montana, my job was to disappear into these places and see what kind of birds lived there. And while I never, I never found a great gray owl, just the idea that they lived there, just knowing that bird was around, you know, it always kept me hopeful. There's a lot to be said for putting yourself in a place where something lives. Because at that point, in my eyes, there's no excuse for not finding it. You know, no one had ever sent me anywhere for this bird. I, I had kind of just taken what I had known, um, what I had read, what I had seen, and I kind of applied that to this new place that I was in. And sure enough, one morning, I stumbled across a great gray owl, and that was the beginning of this whole journey. The bird I had found that day was a juvenile, and what that told me was that essentially it was, there was confirmed breeding of, of great gray owls in that particular section of the Bridger Mountains. Less than four weeks from hatching, the owlets have left the nest. They are flightless and will remain this way for much of the month to come. But this is no accident. These young owls are equipped for life on the ground. Great gray owl chicks are great climbers, using dead fallen trees to climb up off of the ground for safety from predators. But despite having these instincts, life in this forest will never be ordinary. For the backdrop beyond these young outlets spells industry. We had learned of a logging project that was set up right on top of those owls. We were effectively in the epicenter of this, of this logging project. It was called the North Bridger Forest Health Project. I reached out to Steve Hoffman, who a dear friend of mine and, and someone who knew these woods far better than anyone else I had known. 
Um, and Steve and I worked hard to sound the alarm. A lot of people don't have an awareness of, of great gray owls. In fact, the U.S. Forest Service, which manages a lot of their habitat in western Montana, uh, they don't really have the great gray owl on their list. And so they're not required to go out there and do any studies prior to, you know, signing a contract to, to log the forest. We basically tried all we could to get those folks out in the woods to, to stop the logging. And, you know, we did convince them to create a small buffer around a potential nesting tree. But I fear for the long-term success of this nesting pair. I had kind of put that territory in the rear view and we, you know, we, we'd hoped to move on and get away from this logging project. But little did I know that was just the beginning. We found another pair of owls that ended up nesting. The only problem was they were nesting right in a different unit of that same logging project. They actually identified this logging effort as a forest health project. And that's somewhat of a misnomer in that, you know, how are we to say that th this is actually for forest health? We found ourselves going through the motions again with the Forest Service. It was, hey, you know, there's some owls here in the woods. Um, they're on a nest. They're, they have chicks. They're successful. We need to halt this logging project. Except, you know, this year, starting in June, during a critical time for those owls to be raising their chicks, the Forest Service had plans to go in there and, and start cutting trees down. The Forest Service also is under a lot of pressure to, to manage the forest in a way that makes it less susceptible to wildfire. I think that there are ways to try to minimize uh, the likelihood of a wildfire and also protect the birds if you know where they are. Uh, you can at least protect those areas where the birds are already occupying the site. Once you go in there and, and log it heavily, you're taking a big risk that you're gonna lose that nesting territory forever. And if you just protect this, you know, it's just a, basically we're talking about a few acres around a nest site, but you have to know where those sites are. And that's where the, the pre-contract surveys for species like the great gray owl would be very beneficial for the Forest Service for planning future logging programs. So that, that would be my strongest message to the Forest Service. With the summer progressing, the owlets have begun to fly. Sporting fluffy down feathers and misshapen faces, they move around the forest like smaller versions of their adult selves. Until one day, it's hard to tell the difference at all. The calls of young owls echoing through old growth isn't guaranteed to us. It requires recognizing these places for what they are to ensure that future generations of owls can exist like these ones did. I think how we log these forests needs to take into account species that potentially could be harmed depending on how the logging is done. And, and how we log that forest will make a difference in whether these species survive or not long term. You know, you're, you're not just talking about owls. We're talking about multiple facets of an intact ecosystem being displaced by a mismanagement of habitat. I'm not saying that we shouldn't log the forests, but I would hope that the Forest Service 
takes a broader look at how they're managing their forests to include species like the goshawk and, and, and the great gray owl that, that really do need these types of old growth forests that are becoming rarer and rarer and, and uh, it's having an adverse impact on, on the future populations of those birds, uh, which, you know, is, is, a, is, a, is a shame. And it's, it's not consistent with our conservation ethic as a, as, a, as a society. What it comes down to is, do we value these habitats? Do we value these intact ecosystems without human influence? You know, it's bound to look a lot different when the only trees left are the ones with orange rings. bit of a bummer to look around and remember some of the trees that the owls would use that have since been cut down. They won't get to use them anymore. So it's March of 2022. Um, the loggers have come through this area. We're in the nesting area. Um, they did a fair amount of thinning. We, uh, we are pretty fortunate. They did decide to adhere to our, our buffer zone request. And behind us here, we do have a little contiguous plot of maybe, you know, a quarter acre of intact forest. Um, whether or not that, you know, encourages those owls to come back and nest again, um, obviously we'll, we'll have to see. But, you know, the integrity of this forest as a whole is definitely significantly changed. <laughs> 